Good evening, good evening, folks. Welcome to another stream of uh, Let's Talk About It. Thank you for taking the time out of your schedule this evening to jump on the stream. We have a very important topic tonight. Uh, before we get started, I want to do a little housekeeping. First of all, as you come into the building, for those of you that are members, uh, new subscribers on my YouTube page, first of all, I want to thank you for all of my new subscribers. And as you come into the building, please hit the subscribe button and the share button so we can keep these messages going out. It's kind of so I continue bringing you uh, good content. Again, I do appreciate all the new subscribers. Uh, and I thank you for all of your support. Shout out to all, let's talk about it now in my Facebook group. Thank you all for jumping on the stream this, this evening. Uh, I appreciate you as well. And uh, you've all been, for those of you that have been faithful with me from the very beginning. So we're gonna get right into it. We're gonna get right into it. Um, Uh, we're going to get right into it. Um, folks, you see tonight's uh, subject title tonight? It's entitled, Playing with God is a Dangerous Thing to Do. Bishop, Bishop Lamore Whitehead and Infinity Fraud. What I want to do tonight in breaking down what infinity fraud means and how many are victim to this kind of fraud. It's usually based on people or places that we're familiar with, places and people that we're comfortable being around. That's usually where we find ourselves victim to what's titled as infinity fraud. So I want to break down to you tonight what infinity fraud is, but first, before I do that, I want to give a little commentary on the problem of men, so-called men and so-called women of God who then um, who acquire the trust of those who are there seeking after God I mean after all when you look at a hospital it's a place where people go that are sick they go there with confidence in believing that if they go to this particular hospital, they can find the necessary care that they seek based on the illness that they suffer from. Likewise, if they go to a doctor, either a private doctor of their own or just a doctor that they happen to hire to take care of them or look after them or examine them, they go there with confidence based on the expertise the training of that particular doctor, that particular nurse, that particular medical facility to be able to adequately, accurately diagnose the illness that they suffer. They look then to come away with a solution to that illness. Likewise, that's what a church is for. The doctor in that case, first would be God, second, would be that man or woman of God who they believe is called by God to preach and give an adequate biblical diagnosis of the illness. Therein lies the problem. This is what we're going to discuss tonight in this particular stream. We're going to discuss this issue. Now, I will say as a disclaimer, let's talk about it now. It's not a religious channel no it's not however all of us are here and we exist from the same source whether we believe it or whether we do not I won't get into that part of it but I will say this I will say this there are many not just in this country but all over the world that are looking for solutions to their spiritual illness they're looking for a diagnosis, biblical diagnosis to their spiritual illness. And in today's modern church, what we find is many who open up churches like they're opening up a bodega. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's really sad. 
opening up churches everywhere, storefront churches. And now, mind you, I don't begrudge small beginnings, but I will say this many who say that they are called are not called at all, but in fact, they've called themselves because the church today is seen as a business in many cases, sadly, but that's exactly what it's seen as. And as a result, those that are seeking uh, to be healed or to be diagnosed biblically for whatever they, whatever ails them spiritually or whatever weaknesses they struggle with, they find themselves in front of a representative who said they or said they are called by God. In fact, because they've called themselves, they can't find the necessary diagnosis to heal what they suffer from. That is a problem. We're going to talk about a young uh, individual by the name of Mr. Bishop Lamore Whitehead who was just recently indicted for all kinds of crimes, you know, against his own parishioners and against others outside of his congregation, of which he stole, lied, deceived, and acquired large sums of money over a long extended period of time. Now, I will tell you this, Mr. Whitehead, I, uh, you know, I'm going to fall back on calling him Bishop because uh, Bishop is a biblical term which comes with a lot of different requirements of which I believe Mr. Whitehead does not qualify for, not under the circumstances that he finds himself in. This gentleman absolutely is a joke and is absolutely not representative of God whatsoever. So we're going to get into Mr. Whitehead. We're going to get into Mr. Whitehead. We're going to start off first by breaking down a few scriptures that describe this particular individual. For those of you that don't have a Bible in front of you right now at the time that you watch this stream, it's all right. When you get time, you go back to these scriptures and you review them yourself within context. Based on this particular stream tonight and how I'm going to dissect Mr. Whitehead, we're going to start with the first one, 1 Timothy 6 chapter, 10th verse, where it reads, For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted. Now the term coveted simply means some that wanted. Coveted just simply means to want. While some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Let's continue. Now what does the Bible mean when it says uh, touch not my anointed and do my, you know, it says, where it says, touch not God's anointed and do my prophets no harm. I will tell you this. This is a particular verse that has been often used to cover wrongdoing. I'm going to read what this particular article says, and this comes from, um, this comes from, uh, gotquestions.org. It says, what does the Bible mean when it says not to touch God's anointed? Answer, the command to touch not God's anointed is found in two places in scripture. Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. First Chronicles 16 and 22. Psalms 105 and 15. These passages are sometimes used in Pentecostal and charismatic and many others. I will say that, to defend certain preachers from criticism, preachers who promote themselves or their ministries as anointed, warn their would-be critics, do not touch God's anointed. Of course, this helps to insulate them from scrutiny 
and allows them to spread falsehood and bad theology unrestrained. Now, there's other verses that refer to a lot of different things that we see. Where God says he didn't send certain individuals. Jeremiah 23, 21 through 40 says, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to, yet, to them, yet they prophesied. But if they, if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. First Kings goes on to say, 18 and 22, Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Let's continue. Now we're going to get into the characteristic of Mr. Whitehead. I want you to see this kind of individual who called himself not just a man of God, but called himself a bishop. A bishop is one who not only builds churches, but a bishop has a lot of higher level standards that they're held to, of which Mr. Whitehead dropped the ball on so many of them. Let's get into his character. I want you to listen to how this individual talks. Let's get into it. This is my prayer closet. And um, one would think that, wow, look at your closet. My priestly robes and more. Design the coats, you name it, Gucci, Louis, you name it. Fendi, you name it. More coats. And then when you walk into my shoe closet, every designer wear designer with for days, 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 for days. So I was praying in the wrong closet. I didn't know we was supposed to be praying in the closet with the clothes. <laughs> good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. This is the bishop. Okay. Okay. Uh, guys, you kind of get the gist of uh, where I'm going with this with this individual this is clearly not a man of God at all it reminds me of someone that you'd meet outside on the street who's just kind of flashing their material gains and things of that nature so I don't see where uh, anything about him would be would describe him as a bishop a minister a pastor or anything as it relates to a man of God who is supposed to be over a congregation of people who are there believing that they are at a place where they can get biblically diagnosed for the weaknesses that they suffer from as it relates to what the Word of God says. So we can see clearly where he's at, where his mindset is, and what got him in the, con in the situation that he finds himself in right now. Now I'm going to read. Uh, I'm, I'm going to read the definition of affinity. This will describe. This de this defines what happens. The kind of situation that causes many of us to get caught up in these situations. Now, mind you, if any of us have become victim of being uh, lied to or cheated or cheated out of money, it doesn't mean you're stupid. It doesn't mean you're foolish. It doesn't mean any of that. You gotta realize these individuals are very clever. They're very smart, very intelligent. They know how to watch body language. They know how to watch facial expressions. They know how to pay attention to when you display characteristics of that of a person who's troubled or going through something. Now, if they couple all of that with the fact that they may know you have resources, they'll use those resources to their advantage and you'll find yourself going along with something that in different circumstances you may have just walked away 
But this is what they do. They prey on individuals that they find familiarity with. So what is infinity fraud? Infinity fraud is a type of investment fraud in which a con artist targets members of an of a unidentifiable group based on things such as race, age, religion, etc. The fraudster either is or pretends to be a member of the group. Often the fraudster promotes a Ponzi or pyramid scheme. This is what you're looking at, folks. Now let's get into what the U.S. Attorney, uh, what the U.S. Attorney wrote up as it relates to this individual. This comes from a website called justice.gov. At the bottom of this same article right here, you can download the PDF of the indictment against Mr. Whitehead. I'm gonna read that before we finish. It goes on to say this. This is from the United States Attorney's Office, Southern District of New York. It says, U.S. Attorney announces arrest of Lamore Whitehead for fraud, extortion, and false statements. Damian Williams, the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York, and Michael J. Driscoll, Assistant Director in Charge of the New York Field Office of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, announced today the unsealing of an indictment charging Lamore Whitehead with defrauding one of his parishioners out of a part of her retirement savings attempting to extort and defraud a businessman and lying to the FBI. Whitehead was arrested this morning and will pre be presented in federal court today before United States Magistrate Judge Gabriel D W. Gorenstein. The case is assigned to United States District Judge Lorna G. Schofield. U.S. Attorney Damian Williams said, as we allege today, Lamore Whitehead abused the trust placed in him by a parishioner, bullied a businessman for $5,000, then tried to defraud him of far more than that and lied to federal agents. His campaign of fraud and deceit stops now. Now folks, this is sad. This is really, really, really sad. Because if you pay attention to many so-called men of God, and women of God that you find on television, these mega churches, televangelists, many of them, what they have morphed the message, the biblical message, what they have morphed it into is a message of prosperity. It's all about money. Everything is about money and wealth and material gain. And many of them, I've heard, I've heard them do it myself personally. They've coupled that same message to that congregation that if you don't have material gain, if you don't have material possessions and a lot of financial resources, that in some way God has not blessed you. And this is sad. When you paint the narrative of what's supposed to be salvation and you now disguise salvation under money, and the acquisition of material gain, you've already changed the entire message. The entire message has been changed entirely. You got individuals like Creflo Dollar who danced on money that was in front of his, his uh, at the front of his congregation. I'm talking thousands and thousands of dollars were on the floor. I remember watching that video, very sad. And he was dancing on top of the money. Him and a few of the other uh, members of his leadership uh, staff at his church. They were dancing on top of the money. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And you got many other uh, examples like this where this kind of these kind of antics have been done. You got uh, other televangelists who blow on you and you fall on the ground or fake healing messages where someone stands up out of the audience and they walk down but they were crippled their entire life then you find out that they had an earpiece in their ear and someone was communicating with them as to the name of the male or the female that was in the audience they call out the name and they 
They're told in the earpiece what kind of ailment the individual has, and then they call out not just the name, but they call out the ailment. And the person, unbeknownst to the fact that he's being communicated with externally, they believe that he somehow has some type of godly power, godly uh, revelation about their illness. And they come running up to the front, and then a fake healing <laughs> message is given. So you see, and this is just the name of few. We can go on, we can go back in times past with Jim Jones. And some of you that are a little young, you may not remember who Jim Jones is, but this was an individual who also claimed to be a man of God. He led thousands of individuals off U.S. shores and then gave them a Kool-Aid, some type of punch that they drank. And it was spiked with cyanide, making them to believe that if they drank it, they would be going off to be with God in heaven and later found all these individuals laying around in a field, a big field, all of them deceased. Then you had another psychopath in Waco, Texas years ago. They used to call him the Wacko in Waco where he had a compound full of women, many of whom had daughters, of which he impregnated many of them so the compound was full of children in which he fathered. By the time federal authorities found out about him, so many of them, many of them, had not only taken their life under those circumstances, but so many of them had already mothered children by this man who claimed he was not only a man of God, but he went further than that. He claimed that he was Jesus Christ himself. So you have a lot of individuals over the years, and I've only named a few. There's many, many others that I could, I could name. But in short, this is the kind of manipulation from a spiritual standpoint. This is the kind of manipulation from the standpoint of those who trust an individual to say and be who he or she said they were, a man or a woman of God. When you are a believer, you stand between a rock and a hard place in trying to announce what you know is a red flag and again like I said early in the stream the verse that's held over most believers heads is that touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm that's what makes most believers afraid to call out what they see when they see it many many believers see the red flags oh yeah many see that what he's or she's preaching is not biblical and sadly enough, like, a, like an owner's manual or like a driver's manual in your car, and many of us that have cars, we, we have manuals in our glove compartment, many of whom have never read that book, many who have never gone through the manual to know anything about the car that they own, and they've owned it for years. That's why when something goes wrong, they don't know where the thermostat is. They don't know where the oil cap is. They don't know where the transmission cap is. They don't know where the transmission stick is. They don't, they don't know anything much about the car because they've never ever opened up the book which represents the manual to that car. Likewise, most believers have Bibles that they've never really opened and actually studied to confirm what they've heard from their preacher was absolutely truth, absolutely biblical, or whether it was him making up something to bring about a message that perhaps may have had nothing to do with them at all.
but had everything to do with the game of that particular man or woman who said they were a man or woman of God. This is what this message and topic is about tonight. Um, again, this is not a religious channel, but this kind of thing uh, angers me. It angers me. Because I don't claim to be a priest. I don't claim to be a perfect individual. No, not at all. But I'll tell you this. I also don't play with that. That's what I don't play with, you know. And when you and when I see individuals that blatantly mock, blatantly mock God, I have a problem with that. I have a big problem with that. And uh, as a result, Mr. Whitehead became the topic of discussion for my frustration where this type of shenanigans is concerned. He's already exposed. He's already incarcerated. He's already behind bars where he should be or where he should be for sure. But I just wanted to speak on him as it relates to the issue that just currently happened where he's concerned. And to break down what happened in, term, in terms of his believers and those outside of his congregation where he is concerned, which brought him up on these uh, criminal charges that he's charged with. It goes on to say, in this particular article, it says, FBI Assistant Director Michael J. Driscoll said, As we allege today, Whitehead carried out several duplicitous schemes in order to receive funds from his victims. Additionally, when speaking with authorities, Whitehead consciously chose to mislead and lie to them. If you are willing to attempt to obtain funds through false promises or threats, the FBI will ensure that you are made to face the consequences for your actions in our criminal justice system. According to the indictment, unsealed today in Manhattan, federal court and publicly available information. Again, folks, this information is publicly available. This is not something that you cannot see with your own eyes. I'm going to show you the indictment letter in just a moment. It says Lamore Light, Lamore, Lamore Whitehead, who leads a church in Brooklyn, New York, has engaged in a course of conduct in which he sought money and other things of value from victims on the basis of either threats or false promises that the victim's investments would benefit the victim financially. First, Whitehead induced one of his parishioners to invest. First, Whitehead induced one of his parishioners to invest approximately 90000 of her retirement savings with him but instead spent the investment on luxury goods and other personal purposes. Second, Whitehead extorted a businessman for $5,000, then attempted to convince the same businessman to lend him $500,000 and give him a stake in certain real estate transactions in return for favorable actions from the New York City government, which Whitehead knew he could not obtain. In addition, when speaking with FBI agents who were executing a search warrant, Whitehead falsely claimed that he had no cell phone other than the phone he was carrying, when in fact Whitehead owned a second phone which he regularly used to communicate including to send a text message describing it as my other phone shortly after telling the agents he had no other phones whitehead 45 years of age of paramus new jersey is charged with two counts of wire fraud each of which carries a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison one count of extortion which carries a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison and one count of making material false statements which carries a maximum sentence of five years in prison. The maximum potential sentence are prescribed by Congress and are provided here for information purposes only as any sentencing of the defendant will be determined by the judge. Now the rest of this information is more legal, legal and uh, we're not going to really get into that but I want to show you the indictment letter. This is the actual indictment letter 
from the United States District Court, Southern District of New York, United States of America versus Lamore Whitehead, defendant. It reads, overview, the charges in this indictment arise from a course of conduct in which Lamore Whitehead, the defendant, sought money and other things of value from victims on the basis of either threats or false promises that the victim's investment with Whitehead would benefit the victim financially. In fact, Whitehead, who leads a church in Brooklyn, New York, intended and did defraud the victims by taking their money and other property with no intention of investing it, returning it, or enriching the victim. Now listen to that, folks. This man took their money, made them believe that he would be returning their money, and had no intentions on giving them their money back. He blatantly stole from them while professing to be a man of God. This is a dangerous thing. This is very dangerous. It goes on to say, from at least in or about April 20, 2020, up to and including in or about July of 2021, Lamore Whitehead, the defendant, elicited approximately $90,000 from an individual who attended his church, Victim One through a series of cell phone and internet communications with victim one and her son. Under the terms of their agreement, Whitehead would use the money to assist victim one in obtaining a home. And after doing so, Whitehead would otherwise be able to use the money as an investment in his real estate business. However, shortly after victim one transferred Whitehead the money from her retirement savings, Whitehead instead used Victim One's money to purchase thousands of dollars of luxury goods and clothing. And he continued to use Victim One's money for his own purposes. Oh man. Whitehead never helped Victim One obtain a home and has not returned Victim One's money, despite her request that he do so. In or about April and May of 2022. Now this is recent. This is just spring, around springtime. Middle of spring, beginning of, beginning of summer of this year. Lamore Whitehead, the defendant, attempted to convince a businessman. Now this is victim number two, folks. To lend Whitehead approximately $500,000. And give him a stake in certain real estate transactions. Whitehead told victim number two, this is the businessman, that in exchange for this money and interest in real estate transactions, Whitehead would obtain favorable actions by the New York City uh, government for victim two. That would enrich both Whitehead and victim two. When Whitehead knew that he had no ability to obtain such actions, despite that knowledge, Whitehead told victim two that they would make millions. Now folks, let me tell you this. Every time a trickster, every time a fraud is out to get your money, they will always promise you that, don't worry, we're gonna make millions. Oh man, the nerve, the, the fearlessness, in God to do such a thing especially when you claim to be a man or a woman of God I'll tell you folks uh, when you talk about the fear of God is gone it is gone when you can do something like this it goes on to say near the beginning of his relationship with victim 2 Lamore Whitehead the defendant also used threats of force Huh, listen to that. Now you think he's a gangster. <laughs> it says he used threats of force to obtain $5,000 from a business owned by victim two at the direction of law enforcement. Now here's what that means. That means when the businessman had an issue with giving him the $5,000, he went to law enforcement. And what did law enforcement do? Law enforcement advised him to pay Lamar Whitehead. So he did so. And as a result, he was out of $5,000. Now, you know what? Let me explain something to you, folks. 
there's a such thing as uh, white collar and blue collar crime. Blue collar crime, for example, if you rob a store, soon as the police are called, they show right up immediately to stop you in your tracks. You rob a bank, law enforcement shows up immediately to stop you in your tracks. But there's a thing called white collar crime. White collar crime, they don't come up, they don't come so fast. They, they kind of seem or appear to move slowly than blue collar crimes. Why is that? Because white collar crimes tend to involve federal authorities. Now the feds, they have a 98% conviction rate and they don't intend to drop that percentage. So what do they do? They'll allow you to go on believing that you got away with something for a long extended period of time until they build up such a case against you that the case is slam dunk and you can't get out of it because by then they have enough surveillance information. They have enough wiretap information. They have enough information to convict you beyond a shadow of a doubt of in which you will go to federal prison. This is where Mr. Whitehead finds himself. They let him get away for a long period of time. They let him flaunt his fancy cars and his fancy suits and his spending habits. They watched him for a long extended period of time so that when they made their move, he would have no wiggle room to get out of it. No attorney can save him with all the money he has that he stole <laughs> and none of it can save him in a court of law because they have enough information on him to slam dunk this case and I say good good for him I'm glad they got him it says during the course of the investigation into the conduct of Lamore Whitehead the defendants special agents of the Federal Bureau of Investigation executed a search warrant for cell phones on the person of Whitehead. Whitehead told the agents that he owned only the cell phone which was then on his person. When Whitehead knew that he in fact owned a second cell phone. This is another thing I'm going to say. When the feds ask you a question, 90% of the time they already know the answer. They know that if you don't tell them the truth for the answer that they already, for the question that they already had the answer for, that's a whole entirely different charge. It is illegal to lie to the FBI, but that's what he found himself guilty of doing. He said he only had one cell phone. In fact, when they asked him the question, folks, they already knew the answer. They already knew he had a second cell phone because they've been following him for a long extended period of time. They've been listening in on his phone calls. They've been monitoring his text messages that came from both phones. So they knew he possessed two phones. That's why when they asked him the question, they already knew the answer. They were trying to see if he was going to tell the truth. But in fact, he lied. There is a new charge now. Okay. It goes on to say, Phone 2, which he regularly used before and after the execution of the warrant, including to send a text message in which Whitehead identified Phone 2 as my other phone. Shortly after telling the agents that he had no other phones. Count 1, these are his charges. The grand jury charges. The allegations contained in paragraph 1 through 5 above are hereby repeated, alleged, and incorporated by reference as, the, as if fully set forth herein from at least in or about April 2020 up to and including in or about June 2021 in the Southern District of New York and elsewhere Lamore Whitehead the defendant having devised and intending to devise a scheme and at artifice to defraud for obtaining money and property by means of false and fraudulent pretenses representations and promises transmitted and caused to be transmitted by means of wire. Now when they say wire, we're talking about internet. 
we're talking about uh, over the internet you know that's wire fraud making transactions by way of electronic transactions over the internet perhaps uh, wiring money or sending money or you know that's what wire is radio and television communications in interstate and foreign commerce writing signs signals pictures sounds for the purpose of executing such scheme and artifice to wit Whitehead made material misrepresentations to victim one and her son to obtain money from victim one as a purported real estate investment which he received in part through use of an interstate wire when he in fact intended to use the investment in whole or in part for personal purposes now that goes under title 18 United States Code section 1343 and 2 now this is count two folks the grand jury further charges the allegations of contained in paragraph one through five above are hereby repeated alleged and incorporated by reference as if fully set forth therein now here's what I want to do I don't want to continue reading the whole entire thing but I do want to bring you to where you can find it if you go to www.justice.gov it'll show you the whole charge it'll read out uh, it'll commentate the entire charge and then if you go to the very bottom of that same website you'll find an attachment section where there's a PDF file which will bring you to this right here it'll bring you to this that I'm showing you go there check it out in your own time and read it and what I want to leave you with at the end of this stream is this keep your eyes open keep your ears open and don't get so emotionally caught up with anyone I don't care if it's your pastor male or female I don't care I don't care who it is if it's a friend again I said uh, this kind of fraud is based on persons that you are familiar with who are connected with you by way of organization perhaps it was a person you went to college with you graduated with you were, you were part of the same alumni it's individuals that you tend to relax yourself around this is where the fraud takes place <coughs> it, usually, it usually won't take place uh, with an individual that you're not familiar with in most cases in most cases hearing complete pardon me again folks man oh man um, in most cases it won't take place with individuals that you are not familiar with so if I had to leave you with anything I would say just be alert be awake folks don't walk around with your eyes wide shut pay attention because you got a lot of schemers out there just looking for their next victim and don't let that next victim be you with that being said I hope this helps someone I don't know exactly who this was for we had so many different technical issues tonight uh, <laughs> I can do a lot of streams and won't get any interruptions but I got so many interruptions with this stream tonight man from the beginning all the way up until the very end wow but uh I trust that you got the information that you needed again I don't know who this was for um, but I am praying that it was for someone and it and it helped and with that being said I thank all of you for getting on the stream tonight I am your host Charles Chambliss and this has been another stream of let's talk about it now and as I mentioned in the very beginning thank you for bearing with me tonight with all the technical issues that we've had and uh, I thank you again for all of your support shout out to all my new subscribers shout out to all of you on Facebook that jumped on the stream tonight and uh, with that being said have a blessed night have a blessed week and I look forward to getting before you again um, let's what's today today's uh, Wednesday I look forward to getting before you again Friday 
And uh, with that being said, have a great night, folks. I'm your host, Charles Chambers. Another stream of Let's Talk About It Now. Have a great night. Let me see who. Let me see who shout outs I can give before we actually close out. Uh, again, shout out to Abdul. Shout out to Gail. Shout out to Du. Again, have a great night, folks. Thank you for getting on the stream tonight.